Hey, it's me again. In this video, we're going to talk about sugar in relationship to the most common problem that I see out there. Okay, so let me just give you some facts. Sugar increases this hormone called insulin. Insulin lowers that sugar in the blood. So that's the purpose is to lower the sugar. And what does it do? It puts it in storage as fat. So all the sugar you eat goes right into the fat. It's converted. So high sugar diets or high carbohydrate diets are really high fat diets. Okay. Once it's into the fat, it's very difficult to go the opposite direction. Okay, now check this out. If we graph insulin, there's three main types of foods. We have fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So as you can see here, when you eat a carbohydrate in the form of really a sweet thing, it really raises the insulin pretty high, right? If you eat protein, it will also increase the insulin if the protein is a little bit too high or you add sugar to that protein, like a hot dog in a bun, hamburger in a bun. Um, you go to a Chinese restaurant and they put it breaded, different uh, meats, all that, or put ketchup on the, on the hamburger. All that sugar in meat will increase insulin. So, but the right amount of protein won't increase insulin. Like if you have three or four ounces, it will not increase insulin. All right. And then we have fat. <clears throat> fat does not increase insulin. That's right. That's amazing. So, so here's the thing. What is the perfect diet? Do we need, is there such a thing as essential carbohydrates? No, there is no essential carbohydrates. There are essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, that's proteins, but there's no such thing as essential carbohydrates. How much carbohydrate do we need or how much do, are we, do we require? Zero. We don't need carbohydrates. In fact, we're better without carbohydrates. What do we need to do? We need to keep our proteins less and a moderate amount, but with each meal because we don't want to go too far because our body needs proteins for structural repair. But what does that leave us with? You guessed it, fat. So if you are going to correct a problem with insulin, like in a diabetic, a pre-diabetic, like 50% of the population, it is totally and utterly necessary to increase the fat because that's the only thing that's left. And fat will not increase insulin. So you can get away with consuming it. It's very fulfilling. It has fat-soluble vitamins. It's very healthy. And it's the absolute best thing for a diabetic because they're not going to be hungry and you can run off that fuel source and you can take all the pressure off the pancreas. So in the last 50 years, we've completely eliminated all the fat. And look at all the illnesses going up, but we replace those with carbohydrates. Any of these foods that you see that are light or low fat or skim, what they're doing is they lower the fat and they replace them with carbohydrates. Very bad. Now, if you're trying to lose weight and you don't have a blood sugar problem, um, we still want to add fats in there, but maybe we don't want to do a lot of fats. We'll just do a certain amount of fats just until you're satisfied because you could be burning fat, but the fat that you're burning is actually the fat from the diet, not your own body. Okay, but if you're a diabetic or blood sugars, you better increase that fat to be able to heal the entire system. Okay, but I always, always love when people say, well, I'm doing a diet and I'm going to lose the weight and then I'm going to go back to what I was eating before. No, you have to understand, you have to be educated on what to eat and use judgment. But we're trying to just give you principles so you could think with it logically and be aware of what you're putting in your mouth because fat is very enjoyable and you could actually have sugar alternatives to make fat taste sweet as well, okay? So 50% of the population has insulin resistant already and they don't know it. it's, not being, it's not showing up on a blood test. <clears throat> sugar actually stimulates hunger. Yes. Have you ever go to a Chinese restaurant? Oh my gosh. What do they do? Rice, meat, sugar, lots of sugar. Americanized Chinese restaurants, right? It's all the sugar coating bread and then they stick the MSG on there on top of it. So this is like a massive M uh, insulin spike. What happens? Oh my gosh, it's so delicious. You can't stop eating. You eat more than you're, you should be. And then what happens an hour later? You're starving. Why? Because you spike the carbohydrate and then you spike the insulin and it comes down as a low sugar because the insulin has to work so hard to push that push all the sugar out, and now you end up with a hyperreactive low blood sugar, and you're going to crave, you're going to be irritable, you're going to feel dizzy and thirsty, 
I mean, think about what happens when you go to a Chinese restaurant. What do you do? You drink all this water because you're so thirsty and you gain two pounds the next day. That's not fat. That's water weight from the retention because when you, sugar tends to hold a tremendous amount of water. Okay, so when you get rid of sugar, you lose a lot of water weight. Um, so basically, insulin triggers hunger. And going on a diet with including too many carbs is like insane because you're going to be hungry all the time. You're not going to stick to it. I mean, this is not that difficult once you get the facts on this. The guidelines, guidelines, guidelines for carbohydrates by the American Diabetes Association <laughs> is 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrate a day. This is insane, but this is what they're recommending. So look what happens. They have high blood pressure to begin with. They take their medication. They say, include the, uh, the 40 to 60 grams of carbohydrate, but healthy carbs like whole grains and fruits and, and some sugars and alcohol, two glasses, right? So they're, they're recommending all the orange juice, whatever. So here they are, they take their medication, which lowers the blood sugar, and they tell you, eat the carbs, which raise the blood sugar. But take your medication to lower the blood sugar. Eat the carbs. So it's the perfect business to keep selling insulin and metformin and diabetes medication. It is the perfect business because you're giving the... They're actually creating the diabetes. The American Di uh, Diabetes Association is creating diabetes um, and keeping you on the pills. And then they tell you, you can't come off of it. You never get healed. They brainwash the medical doctors into thinking that, no, it cannot be cured. You're on it for the rest of your life, and there's no other hope. That's, what, that's what's out there. It's crap. Um, I believe that um, near all diabetes can be fully and utterly corrected, but you can't then go back to your same ways. It's just, when I, what I mean corrected is like stabilized. So if you maintain that lifestyle, you will maintain the blood sugars. Um, it's actually one of the easiest things to deal with. 40% of all heart disease is related to carbohydrate and sugar. Yeah, and diabetes. So right there, we could literally eliminate heart disease if we just cut the sugar out. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of give you some basics on the importance of keeping the sugar out of your diet if you have any chance of getting healthy at all.